All right, let's go. Ayo, we're three hot guys sharing our opinions because we're special and different. Gold medals, we're winning. Can't help it if we're burdened by our intellect. You can play checkers while we pretend we know the rules to chess. The council has spoken, and we are the chosen. Your nose is broken because I broke it. And welcome back to another episode of Will of the Council. We've got Jordan in the booth. Huh? Whoa, what? Where am I? We've got Danny, who is, I guess I would say, unburdened by what has been and excited about what could be. All I can say is that I know that the wheels on the bus go round and round <laughs> and round. <laughs> <laughs> Until I fall out of a coconut tree. Oh, uh, man. We've, of course, got Becky on the ones and twos. Weird week to be an American, folks. Really strange week, right? Very strange yeah, one. Yeah. It's, um... So we're recording this, uh... We're recording this a couple of days after the, uh, the debate in which Joe Biden revealed that he is, um... Kind of, like, mid-decomposition process. And there's an online movement dedicated to and knock on wood wherever you may find it to uh ask him to step down and for kamala to ascend to the office of the presidency and uh i don't know about you guys i've been completely coconut pilled um i the the switch has been flipped for me <laughs> i was totally like oh whatever she's an even worse candidate and then i've watched like multiple interviews where she is just saying it's like someone put a clip of um what's the main character her name in Veep? Um the, Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's um Elaine's character. Yeah, Elaine's character where she's like they put clips of her talking in Veep and then mirrored of Kamala Harris talking as well. And it's like one in the same. It's awesome. That's I was amazing. Like, Never mind. She rocks. I need her in the office. Life imitates art. I feel like it's unfortunate because Biden they have just strung out on the super soldier serum. Like, they're trying to get whatever they can out of that boy. And that is not a super soldier right there, let me tell you. That is, <laughs> yeah. that soldier is very far from super. Trump is, like, clearly, like, an Adderall admiral, right? Yeah, 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 but yeah. But, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But Kamala... There's, there's 200 Latinos in in the Lincoln Memorial. We have to get them. Uh, but Kamala, I think, would be our first, like, zanned out president. Like yeah. we, we haven't we haven't had a president on downers in a while. We deserve it. We deserve the Zanny to president. Look, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I would just like somebody that's under the age of fucking seventy for once. Please. <laughs> like he's eighty one. Can we please just like oh my god. Uh. You millennials just want stuff you can't have. I'm sorry. That's so true. You gotta vote for the lich of my choosing. Yeah, right. Can I please can I please be represented by an individual that is not on death's door for fucking God's sake? Like Yeah, please. allow us to politics post for a little bit because it's so funny today I heard, you know, they're talking about Biden and they went from, oh, he had a cold to, oh, he's jet lagged from all his travel, which was two <laughs> yeah, weeks dude. from the debate yeah. Yeah, on dude, Air he's, Force One. <laughs> he's just so absolutely busy that oh, he just yeah, doesn't have time. Sure. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it is crazy to me because I have seen some of the most dog shit takes like justifying having him still be the candidate and still be in office when I'm like, no, like there are not 16 imaginary keys to winning an election. Like, I don't care that step the incumbent... one, be a man. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Like, step I don't two, care. Come on, Jack. I don't care that the incumbents <laughs> typically win like this guy. I don't think he's gonna Like, I'm surprised every day I wake up and I don't hear a news story that he has passed away, I am like very surprised. <laughs> like, oh man, I, how? I will say it, it's done wonders for my mental health, you know? Cause oh, has it? <laughs> if I ever have any sort of ideation, I'm like, well, I can't go out before Joe. That's you know, true. like that would just be That's true. You know That'd what? be ridiculous, yeah, I, you know? <laughs> I didn't understand it at first, and then you finished the thought, and I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I have to <laughs> yeah. live. I have to live longer than Joe Biden. What comes first, Joe Biden or Silk Song? <laughs> if Joe Biden lives past the release of Silk Song, I will be shocked. Yeah. I will put money on it right now. 
<laughs> no, um, I, I have to say the whole thing has been really unbelievable. And I do love like people kind of circling the wagon around him. My favorite thing that I keep hearing is like, you don't understand behind closed doors. This guy is like sharp. Oh he's, like, my God. Ready. I hate this. He's like, I hate he's this. He's fired yes. up. And then God, it's like my favorite argument. It's like, all right, can we see it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Can I see it? <laughs> no. <laughs> a qualified candidate localized entirely within your kitchen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a weeping angel, basically, but for cameras. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's a weeping yeah. angel for cameras, right? Like He's yeah. like a ghost, like a boo in Mario, where like if you turn around, he, he gets closer and faster to you, but you look at him, he's like, ooh. Uh. It's kind of fucked up, though, because like I know a lot of people are like, even if he doesn't step down and Kamala doesn't ascend, you know, give it a couple of months and he may not be there any longer anyway. Uh, I just think that's really ignorant of the situation, which is he can't die until we locate his phylactery, right? Like, we have <laughs> too stupid to know what that is. Don't know what that is. Uh, no, nah, it's rough. And, you know, it, the, the rough part is like, I do like a lot of people are like, well, this just proves that Trump is like, he's more there. And it's like, not by oh, a lot, man. Not is by he? a lot. Is he? <laughs> he's, uh, he can still like talk. He has the type of like uh, dementia where like you just ramble all day. Uh, instead of the one where you like get quiet and it's like yeah. those are the two types and we're just we're picking which type we want to control as many nukes as possible it's so bleak man it's really <sighs> it's bad. bad yeah it's really bad it's really bad <laughs> to put into perspective how much this guy just yaps and for, and it makes like zero sense there's, there's so many clips of him doing weird things trump that is but one of my favorites which i reference all the time now is that if a plane flies by i look over at the plane and then I look back at the sound and I go, I thought that was China. That's my favorite mm. clip where he thinks he's a plane go overhead and he goes, was that China? It's wonderful. He's just, <laughs> he's just talking up there. He is just talking up there. No, it's uh, I don't know. I uh, and, you know, I do think that there is some merit to being like he shouldn't step down. That's kind of like unprecedented, you know, in the grand scheme of things, stepping down because of age related reasons. It's like the only other even remotely comparable one is LBJ and like that. I mean, it wasn't great, but he was going to lose anyway. I just think the truth of the matter is there aren't a lot of data points for presidents. There's only been like 45 of them. Yeah. So like everything that's happening right now is already unprecedented. It's unprecedented someone would be this old and occupy the most powerful office in the world. You know, it's unprecedented that like that type of performance would happen while the cameras are rolling, you know, and it's unprecedented. He's running against the guy he's running against who's currently under investigation until he wins the presidency and then is immune from everything he ever does ever again. Isn't he immune even without being president? I don't know. I think he, maybe for the stuff that he did while he was president. But like, when was all the sex crime? Was that before he was? It was before he was president, right? I think so. Yeah. But does it work? I don't know. Whatever. Well, Law if it does, now. it creates the greatest incentive ever, which is you should like go out, rob a bank and then immediately start a campaign. It's like, I only got one out, baby. And it's becoming <laughs> president of the United States. But that's the thing. Biden now has immunity. He can do whatever he wants. Let's go crazy, bro. But the Democrats <laughs> he's only up. must hold the moral yeah. high oh, we ground. Must hold. We must yeah, hold. Yeah. Stupid. They're, they're going to hold this L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. To use that picture against Biden when he loses his own L. Oh, man. Last thing, I just wanted to say more about the lag. Like, he found the, the jet lag. President Joe Biden, this is a quote, I believe, from like, I don't know what article, but I'm like a screenshot. Joe Biden has blamed his poor debate performance last week on jet lag, telling reporters that he, quote unquote, wasn't very smart for, quote unquote, traveling around the world a couple of times before the debate. And this is his quote from him. I didn't listen to my staff. And then I nearly fell asleep on stage, he said. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, dude, we uh we saw. We saw, man. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we saw it, dude. Oh, oh my god. It's so awesome. I just like come come on. Like ugh. All right, are we um are we ready for the uh posts? Oh, I'm ready. I'm so I ready. Think these Redditors could be president. I think they anybody, could. I mean, anybody else. <laughs> a human over 70. Wait, a human under uh, 70. I'm begging. All right. This first one uh, comes from r slash relationship advice from username throw ra ball of mots. Uh, ah, okay. Oh, here we go. It leads my 86M presidential candidate. No, wait. My 24F <laughs> boyfriend 25M told me that snacking on mozzarella cheese balls might be a deal breaker. What should I do? Kill him. Kill yeah, him. Obviously. Kill him. What kill the him. fuck? Kill him. Kill him. Obviously, get, become president, 
be immune and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no person should be forced to endure a life without mozzarella. All right, here we go. Throwaway account because my boyfriend knows my personal. I always love these insanely specific ones. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah, if they see this, you're going to be implicated. Yeah, like, of okay. course. Like you're toast. Hey, Reddit. So I'm in a very weird situation and I don't know how to proceed. I'm hoping to get some insight from people who don't know us personally because this is really embarrassing for me. So to preface, I'm a cheese lover. Me too. Do we have me any too, cheese too. lovers too, in the crowd? Me too. I'm, I, I'm the charcuterie king. I love cheese. I'm a little cheesy. You know, uh, Jordan actually got me uh, for some holiday, uh, like a cheese board. Yep. We had to throw out one of the cheeses literally yesterday. It, it got moldy. Um, that but was we've forever been using ago that I got you that. Yeah, of course you had to throw it away. Okay, well, <laughs> we've been working at them. I can't just sit down and eat a wheel. Oh, I can. I can. I literally, <laughs> actually, very funny. Before this call, for like as a meal, I ate a full 12 slice pack of provolone and crackers. As you're like, a freak. My you are you're such so, a so good. Fuck, you're, you're, you're a so genetic based. anomaly. You are really you, are a genetic up. anomaly. Let's do a round table right now. Favorite cheese. Oh, uh, dude, that's so ooh. tough, man. God, I do love mozzarella. I do love provolone. I love Gouda. Gouda's amazing. I love Gouda's Munster. Great. Fuck. I'll let you guys go first. I'll soul search. I was just going to say, this is the most accessible cheese that I can buy quickly and cheap and like weekly. Uh, like Vermont sharp white cheddar oh, that God, I just that like so cut and like eat. Sharp white cheddar has, it, it's having a moment. I yeah. think it's it's coming back. <laughs> it's good. I you know I like me some mozzarella. I like mm -hmm. me some ricotta. Mm -hmm. I like my yeah. white cheeses. Mm -hmm. I like my Great curd. Yep. But number one's got to be I'm I'm on a raclette kick. Oh, I do like raclette. Ooh, yeah, I I don't think I've tried that. Oh, it's the stupid. It it's almost like a food designed to be photographed. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever had like a wheel? You go to like any fair these days, any fair, any like street market. Oh, be a yes, guy, yes, I do know this cheese. Yeah, with You're the right. Big wheel. They have a yes. lamp and they scrape off the top. Oh, I like oh, I get one. So good. I eat like a pound of this melted cheese and then I come back and I go, give me another pound, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm going in. <laughs> I got to get that. You, what, you get that at the deli? I, I don't get it at the deli. No, I get it at, like when I'm out. When you like oh, go oh, to. Oh, a, I see, I see. It's one of the got highlights it. of going to like a little market or something. Got it. Got it. I think it's between Munster and Gouda, but sometimes oh. Munster is a little too salty for me. So I got to pick Gouda. I think Gouda's is like Gouda's probably so one of good. Favorites so good good is a top three cheese for sure mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah but this so person good. says my number one cheese has to be mozzarella specifically yeah, ball-shaped mozzarella the texture the flavor are so good especially with a little salt sprinkled oh a little salt mm -hmm. oh that sounds so good you that get, you get a little a little tomato Fuck. you get a basil oh my god Maybe if you have like a balsamic glaze dip. Oh, yeah. Make like a caprese, oh, a caprese so sort of fucked up Fuck, caprese. Dude. Let's oh. go. I buy those Belgioisio. Oh my God. I don't know how to say that. Uh, packs of <laughs> mozzarella balls. I am familiar with these balls. You, you buy them at the store, they're like pre packaged three balls. They're great for snacking. They have been my snack of choice since I was a freshman in college. They're easy and convenient to keep in my mini fridge for a quick, cheap, and easy bite. My boyfriend and I have been dating for three years now, and we recently moved in together. He's known about my love for cheese since our first date. He took me to a restaurant, and we ordered, like, three charcuterie boards. It's Banger. you. It's Jordan. It's me. God, <laughs> this is awesome. I don't think he knew what he was getting into with my snacking, and he probably didn't expect me to eat mozzarella balls on the daily. I'd be like, is it that shocking? <laughs> it's oh just my God. cheese that's not shocking like you ever at eaten all. a sandwich that has cheese on it i don't know <laughs> For, well weird. even then you had three charcuterie boards yeah like come on <laughs> all right i thought he was fine with it but now he's making an issue out of it and i don't know if i should stop his specific issue <laughs> is the shape of the cheese i hate men i hate yes, men so yes, much. yes i just yes, hate yes. men I yes, just yes, hate yes, men. Yes, 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 okay, yes. listener. Ow. Whoa, hold up, up. You got it. You got it. Hear him out. Hear him out. Maybe he's got a good point. Maybe he's got a good point. Okay. He tells me that seeing me eat ball-shaped cheeses makes him uncomfortable. He thinks that it is lewd, and that, and I quote, seeing me pop a wet cheese ball in my mouth makes him think of me having another man's balls in my mouth. End I just quote. hate men. I That's just hate men. I just awesome. hate men. Continue. Like Please I, continue. I just, I Shut just up. hate men. I gotta know more. Yeah, I was really confused, and I told him I don't think this is that big of a deal, and it's literally cheese. But he told me the imagery still grosses him out. I thought we could work through it, but after a while, he said it might be a deal breaker if I don't stop. Afterwards, he left for work. During the argument, he said he doesn't care if I eat mozzarella, but he wants me to eat its string. Ooh! 
<laughs> Ew. <laughs> what are you, five? What are oh you, a my fucking God. kindergartner? Oh my God, how was kindergarten? How was math class, you fucking baby? <laughs> or shredded instead. Yeah, get a fistful of fucking shredded mozzarella. Oh no. I know this is high maintenance of me. <laughs> No, it's, it's not. No, no. But mozzarella balls are my favorite snack. The texture, the taste, it's just so good. Okay, this is getting a little loot. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a little loot. Hold on. <laughs> I like shredded cheese and string cheese, but they aren't the same. I'm thinking I should buy the smaller balls and hope they won't bother him. But if I feed into this, it could reinforce this mindset. I don't know what to do. I want to make him comfortable, but this feels controlling and unnecessary. Not to mention, I don't want to give up my favorite snack. He's a great guy. This post isn't doing him justice, I know. But I just want to know if this is a red flag from him or if putting my foot down on this is unreasonable. Thank you in advance to anyone who reads this and offers me some advice. Okay, here's your advice. Tell him he's a little weirdo fucking baby. He's a little weirdo baby. <laughs> like, who the fuck does this? Your food, I actually see your food, and it kind of reminds me of men's testicles, actually, which is... Uh, I have the same problem constantly. <laughs> <laughs> You beat me to the punch, Jordan. I was going to say, I'm listen. I'm sorry, but I, I can't. I'm very oh. progressive, folks. I love the LGBTQ. But if you're thinking about another guy's balls, when seeing cheese, you might be a little gay. Like, I just I can't get over this. Like, uh, I am so unconfident. Like, I am such an insecure little fucking <laughs> I don't know if we can say it. Yeah, jokes we, we aside, say unconfident <laughs> or no confidence or so self-conscious is absolutely correct. It's just like, oh my God, these cheese balls make me think you're cheating on me. You are so lame. <laughs> Why are men so lame? These I These cheese balls them. are making me horny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, but wait, wait, wait. You make up a good point, Joseph, that like, how come it's not making you horny for your partner? Why aren't you imagining because your own Because it's not your balls. balls. Yeah. It's not your balls. What if- But like- hmm. What if somebody buys them a melon baller? Like, what if, what if he Ooh. like, just, she can't eat ball shaped foods. Like blueberries, you can't eat that shit. Nope. Those are somewhat spherical and remind me of testing. Lollipops, the one, the dum-dums, out. Yeah. Out. Out. And out. you're sucking oh. on them too? Cake pops? More like dick pops. You can't <laughs> eat that shit. <laughs> Candied apples? Nope. Throw it out. <laughs> okay, let's 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 take a step back. Uh, I think we're being sure. a little unfair okay. to this guy. You're right. Um, oh, <laughs> you're so right. Like, actually, yeah, you're right. This okay. is totally reasonable. I'm sorry. Let's think about this. How do you? So here's the thing. It's like we've talked about this a lot on this uh, on the show. Is like sometimes one person wants something that's insane or makes no sense or is ridiculous, and the response can't be like that's insane, you're ridiculous. It has to be like okay, well they care a lot about it, so you have to treat it with the gravity that they kind of uh, have imparted to it. And in this one, he says it could be a deal breaker, right? So I guess this is a good question. How do you tell someone who's being absolutely insane, like this boyfriend, that they are being insane? Uh, you say that. Well, I'm sorry, you just say that. I mean, you can you say being you're an being insane, insane and that's like, fine. But I think the real like core of it is you say, listen, if you think this is a deal breaker, I get it like you can break up with me for any reason i'm not going to stop you but like this to me feels very like not fair because it's so minute because of something that you are experiencing it's not a problem that i'm having it's your own brain creating this issue mm -hmm. and i it, it'd be like if like if you had anger management issues now of course that's one a much level higher than imagining a, a guy's balls um, as mozzarella okay, balls. Okay, I'm with you. Right? I think I'm with but, you, but keep going. Um, they go, well, I don't get angry if you walked a little faster or something. I don't know, some kind of, you, you expect the other person to be fixing your own insecurities, right? That's what's happening here. Yes, yeah, 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 uh-huh. The reverse of this situation is, um, you know, she does something that annoys him that is like, that is a quarter, like really actual net negative on him. Maybe like he, she like pokes him or something. I don't know. Like I'm trying to think of, a, of an actual reason, but like something that literally is something she can stop. That is, that makes his life harder rather than his own brain creating these insecurities. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm a little dancing around it, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I, you, I mean, you're describing what's happening and like, yeah, I agree. But ultimately at, at the end of the day, I just think this guy is so fucking annoying. Like what a fucking <laughs> loser. I'm sorry. I just like, like, I can't, yeah. I can't, like, lend credence to, like, you know what? 
let's fucking take a step back. Let's like look at this from an objective point of view. Like fuck an objective point of view. This dude fucking sucks. I'm so yeah. sorry. This is so nice. He's like, is this a red flag that he is worried that I'm cheating because I eat cheese? Yeah, like or it looks like I'm cheating on him or that he thinks that I'm cheating on him because I'm eating a fucking spherical shaped cheese. Yes, that's a red flag. That's super fucking weird. Yeah. No. What a fucking weird thing to say. I think it's really hard to give any of this any kind of benefit of the doubt of like, oh, like maybe you can work around this insane thing because it is rooted in insecurity, right? Like it is not rooted around a problem that is fixable. It is rooted on someone's brain creating an issue that doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Well, that's something that you can work on. Like, I think it is worth confronting that and working on that before you even engage with this literally like insane situation like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's talking all in this thread about like, oh, what if I size them up to like the tennis ball sized ones or I size them down to the like pearl sized ones? And it's like, that's that's the yeah, wrong you're question. The point. Yeah, that's not yeah, going to 100 percent. That's not going <laughs> to fix anything. Bigger balls. No, smaller balls. That's a lot of men. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think you're if sucking you... off like a baby. Like this. <laughs> If you held a gun to my head and forced me to therapize this post, it is exactly like you said, Joseph. Right. It's the wrong question being asked. The thing that needs to be asked is, okay, we need to work on this insecurity that you have, and it's not about the cheese balls, right? It's like the, the problem is that the fact that there is an insecurity here. However, I think this is so fucking weird and annoying that this is a huge red flag and I would like not blame you if you were just like, man, fuck you. We've been together for three years. What a waste of my goddamn time. Bye. There you go. <laughs> That's how I really feel. I about think it. The, the most gracious thing you could maybe do is like, listen, I like you, but this is such a like weird controlling thing about one of the most smallest things ever. Please work on yourself. And if you feel like you no longer have a fear of mozzarella balls, you know, come back. But otherwise I can't like, you're not, there to make that guy feel better or whatever yeah. and i mean it's no. it's a hard position to be in because she's in the comments saying like this is really the only thing that's bothered him during our entire relationship together and it's one of those things where it's like she says as much where she's like i'm not going to torch a three-year relationship over something that even if i acquiesce i could just stop eating this size of mozzarella balls it would be super easy and the response would be like, okay, well then accommodating this weird neurosis of this guy requires you to do almost nothing. Why don't you just do it? But it is those small weird things that it's like, but why should I have to? Like, yes, yes exactly. Ve exactly, Joseph. It would be very easy to do what this guy wanted and just like change your snacking habit just a little bit. It's almost harder than if it was like a huge deal breaker, like, you know, like, do we need a joint bank account or something, for instance? Instead, <laughs> it's like, this is a minute thing that we could change overnight. It's just a very strange ask. And she's she's in here like, I'm willing to be accommodating, but I kind of want to know why. And I think resolving that why is obviously the important part of this, not being like, yes, get right. the more effective mozzarella balls for snacking. Oh, man. No, it's a, it's a great point. I think that's absolutely correct i think it reminds me of like uh, friends i've had who've had been in these kinds of relationships where it's not as insane but they will be like oh like i have x request which is kind of insane and you don't like put your foot down or you say no i i can't do that or i i really don't want to because this is something i do or i like or etc and instead comply and then it continues like that you just like mm -hmm. allow them to kind of warp your life to theirs by doing things like this where you give up things that you thought you never really cared about because and in the first half, you're like, well, whatever, I can change my mozzarella balls. And then it's something else and it's some other small thing. And then you suddenly realize like years into your relationship, when you like maybe break it off, you're like, oh, my God, I can eat cheese balls again. And you suddenly realize how like happy you are. You aren't like constrained by like the thousands of things that maybe th that's happened. Like I've, I've seen that experience before not that that's happening here just that like it feels very similar to that does that make sense yeah no it, it totally makes sense i think you're on the right track i guess i would say 
the thing that distinguishes, you know, the instant case here is that uh, she's very clear that this is the first time something like this has happened and that it's one of those things that, like, he is clearly embarrassed about as well. So, like, as much as I think this guy sucks, like, I I don't really think this is worth torching the relationship about. But it is something yeah, to, like, yeah. it is something to check in on periodically and make sure what you're describing isn't happening. I would agree with that. And the thing with the stipulation that this cannot result in you no longer eating fucking mozzarella cheese balls. Like, no, I'm yeah. sorry. You got to put your foot down. He does have to get over it. He has to get over it. it. Yeah, I'm it's, so it's sorry. Also, it, it's just insane. It's just an insane yeah, It's ask. insane. It's insane. Yeah. I just, like, I can't get over it, man. That's crazy. Yeah. What if she, instead of, like, eating mozzarella balls in front of him, what if she, like, sucked another man's dick in front of him? And then he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> this reminds me of that time you were eating you those mozzarella balls. This reminds me of the mozzarella balls. <laughs> Oh my god, this totally looks like you're sucking another man's dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would, babe, I would actually really prefer it if you didn't suck another man's dick in front of me. It kind of reminds me of sucking another man's dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It, all right, are we ready to are we ready to vote on this one? Uh god. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, yeah, sure. It should be pretty easy. I mean, decision time. When it comes to the mozzarella ball boyfriend, is he the asshole? Three, two, one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. He's being the, weird. Of course he's the asshole. Yes. You can, of course, work this out, and I think you should. But yeah, he's being unrealistic. He's being an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of like, it just can't end with you. You can't acquiesce to this completely. The I think I will acquiesce to the point that Joseph made where it's like, yeah, okay, the relationship doesn't have to end here. Fine. Even though I think this guy is a total fucking loser. It <laughs> it's so easy to but, say that online. It's so easy for I know, us I know, to say I know, it. I know, I know. It's I very know, Reddit brain but, to be like, lawyer up, divorce, get, go to the gym. I know, Hit the and gym. I'm tempted to say it here because I just can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, it's but, insane. But I will agree that you probably shouldn't torch the three-year relationship over this, but you can't stop eating your favorite fucking snack yeah, don't give up and the thing to investigate or interrogate here is why he has this insecurity in the first place and then you two resolve it from there I'm gonna have to have a hard talk you know do not yeah. let yeah. up ground enjoy your cheese what's the alpha male thing maintain frame he's shit testing <laughs> <Yes>. you <laughs> hold frame hold frame hold frame <laughs> the council has spoken all right, are you guys ready for the second one? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. I really like this thing where we do a crazy person, then one that's interesting, then a crazy person. So this is the interesting one. This comes from r slash am I the asshole two days ago. We've been sent this one a bunch of times. Yeah, I know. I think all of us individually have been sent Not this me. one. Not me, maybe. Probably mm -hmm. because uh, it has a striking similarity to my life circumstances <laughs> oh good uh, very great this one comes from kitchen page 2111 it says am i the asshole for telling my husband he needs to quit his dream job all right before we get into this this is in as we pointed out before we started recording asshole poo mode so this is always a nice tell of a good post because what it means is r slash am i the asshole occasionally gets posts that will make it to the front page and when that happens they have to turn on a specific type of filter that only allows people who have answered a lot of am I the asshole questions to post. So we're getting the greats in this response because frequently and usually if it's a woman, uh, all the comments are going to be like, you're sick, you're a bitch, fuck you. And it's just people who are filtering in from normal Reddit or slash all. <laughs> this is the the all time greats, the LeBron James of telling you if you're an asshole or not uh, is in this thread. OK, ready? So I, 32F and my husband, 29M, problematic age gap, live in an area with extremely <laughs> high cost of living. I work a job that pays decently well, which is kind of necessary to live where we do. My husband worked a job for years. It paid less than mine did, but it was okay overall, though he absolutely hated working there. Around October of last year, my husband got a job in his dream career field. He has been working at it for years and was really excited about finally getting there. The big issue is the pay in his field is abysmal. He works as a freelancer, which is standard in his industry, 
so his job has zero benefits and it's a pretty significant cut from his old job. We don't have combined finances, and after he took the new job, we had to rearrange how we pay for things to account for his lower income. Previously, he had covered a slightly larger percentage of the expenses due to me having student loans to pay off while he didn't, and as it is now, I have to be the breadwinner since his income is basically halved, paying for a larger portion of expenses. I sat him down recently and told him I feel he needed to quit his job and find a better paying field because it just wasn't feasible. He got upset since, like I said, this is something he's dreamed of for years and worked very hard to get, which I understand, but I feel like it isn't fair to me. We've had to cut back on things, and there's really not any sign of a pay increase at this point. I feel like I'm carrying him. He offered to get a part-time job on the side, but I know anything he could get that would be feasible for him while keeping his current job wouldn't provide much. He suggested we move somewhere less expensive, to which I said absolutely not, since we'd have to go quite a ways to find something in that range, and it would mean ridiculously long commutes to my work and being further away from my family. He offered to have his parents help, which I also don't want because it's not really a long-term solution. He's very upset. I understand it because I know he worked hard to get here. If he quit now, it would kill his career, and it would be extremely hard for him to get another shot at this job. It's not like we're struggling, which is true. We pay rent, we put food on the table, but I hate feeling like this. I work long days at a rather difficult job while he works from home doing something he did before as a hobby and only makes half as much money now. My point is that it's not like he has to stop doing what he does altogether, since as I mentioned, he did it as a hobby beforehand, but he's upset because he said it's the only thing he's ever wanted to do career-wise and giving it up now would mean likely never would be able to make it work. Am I the asshole? I understand this is important to him, but I'm starting to resent him because I feel like the burden of our finances are being placed on me and we've had to cut back on a lot of things. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't expect a real one, did you? It's not no. exactly mozzarella ball time over here. Uh, I think I started the last one, so if anybody else wants to start hey, this one, y'all can go right you, ahead. Buddy, suck my hey. dick. I, I mean, I can start this no, one. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll mess do it with you. I'll mess with it. All right, Joseph, go ahead. Okay, go, go ahead. So I made an illusion at the beginning that this is similar to my, uh, what's it called, uh, life situation, but actually pretty much exactly the opposite of it, in that I was working a hard job that I didn't like, and then I switched to YouTube, but the YouTube switch came with a huge increase in pay. So I got to completely opt out of this conversation. Uh, thank God. You saying that just reminds me of that comic strip that's like, man, I wish I was uh, wearing what that guy wears, but he probably wishes what I'm wearing. And then he thinks about it. He's <laughs> he, like, is, he did not get that fit off. <laughs> yeah, he did not get that fit off. Me? I got this fit on. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I had a similar situation where I think it is very easy for a partner to feel a little resentful when someone who is kind of working what they would consider a dream job, you know, gets it because working sucks. It's like the hardest thing in the yeah. world and everyone has to do it until they die. So it's really easy to see someone who's doing something they love and be like, hey, like I feel unappreciated insofar as I'm killing myself to make this work and you're breezing through life. And the difference between doing what you love and doing what you don't love is night and day, you know? <laughs> it really yes, is night yes. and day. But here's what I'll say. I think she is selling this guy a little short here. She talks about how even when he had his old job, it paid less than hers. Uh, but then later talks about how despite that, he paid for the brunt of rent and food because she was paying off student loans. So for me, all it yes. sounds like is that she went to school longer than he did or from a financial position that he wasn't in. And he was like, that's OK. I will subsidize that lifestyle while I have the ability to do so. Now they're in the opposite position. And she's like, I just don't like carrying him. Yeah, I think this general mentality where like she's like, I'm making more than he is and putting more in and therefore carrying him isn't really conducive to the type of partnership that is necessary for a relationship to work. You know, I think that something as trivial as how much money you make in a relationship where both of you are happy otherwise, it shouldn't be like the deal breaker when it comes to, am I allowed to love this person? And I feel like it's very strange that she feels like resentful as a result. She talks about how they've had to cut back and how she, I guess, misses having more money, which is a legitimate concern. Like, I understand, like, that's horrifying, you know? As she says his pay got cut in half. But then later in the thread is like, although we're not struggling, we always make rent and we never run out of food. So it's like, I don't really understand what exactly she's complaining about. She's like, the finances are different than they were, but the trade-off is that the guy gets to do what he loves for a living instead of a job that's killing him. I um... See, that point right there, that the job was killing him before, did you not feel for him earlier? Yeah. Right? Like, when he hated it, 
he would come home and hate his job, hated it, right? You clearly, I mean, it seems like you valued that a bit more money, which I get. It can pay for the rent and stuff, but did it. Maybe it financed other things, whatever. But he hated himself, right? Like, how miserable is that? And he was sacrificing, like you mentioned. This guy was sacrificing for himself and for her for the student loans. He said, I'll do it. I'll, I'll go to my terrible job, pay off your loans, yada, yada. I don't know how long. I don't know whatever, but it was long enough that she mentioned it here. So I'm shocked that she hasn't given him the chance, right? Yeah. Wasn't it like, I don't even, yeah. get, I don't get time frames because she doesn't put it here. So I don't know how long he's had this, like his dream job. But like, you know, I would maybe be more understanding if he was at the dream job for free or whatever. Or the very horrible pay like making for nothing, too long. Yeah. Right. Like making nothing, not contributing for years and he's just like completely okay with it because she just pays for everything that would that would be more understandable but this is not the case yeah no this is when i read the title and i started off at the top of this i was like you know i'm actually really ready to side with Me the too. woman here because yeah. like i totally understand like financial insecurity and wanting to avoid that in any oh, it's, way it's the worst it is the worst i remember when i started um when i went through unemployment for the first time in my life during the pandemic i was like oh my god i was miserable i was extremely depressed well obviously the, the pandemic was a part of that too but a lot of that was like employment insecurity mm -hmm. and and financial insecurity mm -hmm. and it sucked like it was really bad so just the amount of stress that financial insecurity can put on you is very like easy to empathize with for me but then we look into this post and it's like he's doing his freelance job like his dream job he's getting paid half of what he used to but we still can put food on the table we still can pay our rent we still can uh, like he's been offering all these potential solutions like he offered we could move he offered to have his parents help he offered he's get a part-time job uh, get a part-time job yeah on the he's side. offered like, a lot of options but no 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 i don't want these i just want him to feel miserable about work it's like that's the thing that kind of irks me about this post is that it's like she's sort of demanding this shared misery about work between the two I'm of them. I'm glad you brought that up right? because I, I do want to kind of talk about this is is like I think there is just this sort of pervasive belief um, that if I am suffering at my work, you are getting away with something by not suffering at yours. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels wrong on a spiritual level for someone to enjoy, you know, going into work if you hate it. And so I, I don't know if this is like a knee jerk reaction rooted in that like insecurity, but I mean, I can't imagine a scenario other than exactly that feeling where she would say something like, I'm beginning to resent him. And she's like, well, I have to go to work and he gets to work from home. And I mean, that doesn't mean he's not working. You know? He also was like, even goes so far as to say, I mean, if we really, really need money, my parents can help us. And like, that's just like, I'm not saying it's free money. Of course, you don't want to burden other people. But like, that's what family's for, right? Like to support their son and be like, well, I mean, if your family helps us and supports your dream, That'd be great because I can't, I, well, you know, I'm, I'm paying for everything else. So that'd be awesome or whatever. Like there's no compromise there. It's just, eh, I don't even know if she finds a good reason why that's not good. I don't want, it's not a long-term solution, but then what is right? Like what you think he's going to be broke forever. And you're just like, oh, well, this is it. This is my life. Um, maybe, but like, you know, that's a talk you're supposed to have. I just don't understand it. And Joseph, you said it very well that like the resentfulness when she speaks about him getting to work from home, I was like, oh, there might be I something else going here, yeah. on here. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because he yeah. gets to do the hobby that he loves and loves his job while you go to your hard job and pay for the bills. I get it. I've been in a relationship where uh, you are kind of like the sole breadwinner and um, the other person can't really pull their weight. But um, my situation was my partner refused to do anything right like it was like nothing no like saving no moving the only thing that they did do was uh, pay off their like student loans very similarly and i let it i let that happen because i was like that's probably good right sure so i'll pay for other stuff you know whatever i'll pay for our vacations i'll pay for our food and then i you know i did get like this woman i got very resentful because it was more than just money it was a lot of other things but 
um, was definitely a part of it, right? Definitely a part of the fact that she just refused to kind of find a job because my partner hated her job too. So it wasn't even get to do the dream job. If my, if I, my, my partner had a dream job and I'm able to kind of just lightly support us, that's awesome. I mean, that's amazing, right? Like they get to be so happy and you share that with them and you don't like, why don't you want to share that with that person? I don't know. It's, I get it. There's, there's tough stuff here, but I don't get it specifically for these circumstances. I'll just say, you know, misery loves company yes. is a phrase that yeah. exists for a reason, right? Misery loves company is a phrase that exists for a reason. And you honestly, you feel better when you're not the only one feeling miserable. But I challenge you to reframe that thinking. Because, you know, there are instances when maybe I have like an easier day at work and, you know, my wife is having a harder day at work, right? The thought that I have in my mind is... Thank God both of us aren't having hard days. And then I take some of that extra time that I have and I like that extra energy that I have from not having such a hard day. And I go like, do the dishes or do the laundry or like, you know, just like, ugh, I don't know, like take on an extra task that I can that she might not be able to do because of her stress level. And that's like fine. Like, yeah, you're both not miserable. So he can take some of that lack of misery and use it to help out in the relationship more in other ways, right? Like, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's tough because I do empathize. It, it would be really, I mean, I had to go to work and do a hard job before I got this job that I'm doing now, where I would go into the office at fucking 4 a.m. It was super hard. That shit sucked. But I didn't, like, resent my partner for that, right? Like, it's like, wow, you have it so good, you know? Like, I don't know. It's yep. just weird. This is a weird way to think about the life that you share with someone i, I guess yeah, i just don't get it yeah that that's exactly i guess i would say uh what i was going to say insofar as like we've talked a lot about this weird mentality that's like whenever anything good happens to anyone it's like no it should have happened to me instead but like if you are not able to break yourself out of that mentality for the person you intend to share your life with like that's a problem and you know if their happiness is not yep. your happiness that's a problem because you know what are you expecting them to remain miserable throughout your relationship like you uh at some point they're gonna hit a w and you have to be prepared for when that happens ideally you should be excited for it to happen yeah i just can't get over the fact that he's offered like all these different like compromises and solutions and it's like first of all did he even the, par the part-time one baffles my mind because that just solves the problem and she's like no i don't yeah. think it'll bring in it enough does, extra it's like, well, how the fuck do you know? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> and then at the end of your post, you said, well, we're not struggling. Yeah, then we're if doing you're not fine. struggling, a part time job would bring in a de like an OK amount of money. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just what are you, all like, savings. Yeah. Like imagine he gets a job as a fucking yes. barista or bartender and makes like a fuck ton in tips or something. I did like, this. I worked a full time at an IT job and nights I would work at an Outback Steakhouse because I wasn't making enough money to pay for like everything. So I like got a second job and made tip money at night so I could like go out to eat sometimes or whatever. I don't know. It. I, I really was like finances are hard and I really was willing to be yeah. like on this person's side. But I really do think they're being a little unreasonable here. Yeah. I think the, the last thing I want to say is just there's one comment that I really appreciated was someone was like, listen, if you date, for example, an artist or um, in my case was like I was a part theater major, part econ major. Um, I didn't go full time on theater, but I had, of course, many friends who did. And uh, it's a hard life. And mm -hmm. if you date that person who is trying, you will know, right? You know what they're doing. You know what they're trying. And this guy had a shit ass job and for years was trying to get his dream job. And you know this. You know this is who you dated, right? And he got it. And that's what you think of instead of after years of hating himself, terrible job, paying bills, finally can do it. You're like, well, hmm, I'm missing money here. <laughs> What's going on? Just can't do it, man. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's tough. Oh. And <laughs> it is funny to be like, oh, they were an artist when you uh, when you started dating. Did you just assume that they would never make it? <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> oh, my God, that's so sad. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Uh, yeah. Are we ready to do this one? Yeah. Decision time. All right, Jordan, where are you landing on this? Is this woman the asshole? Honestly, the more we've talked about it, the more I've landed on the fact that all this is is just jealousy covered up with, you know, something that they have, like, identified that people might resonate with. Like, 
All they are is just jealous that somebody is happy that they've made a living, albeit a smaller living, but they're making a living off of doing something that they love. They're jealous of that, and they're trying to say, well, you know, my reason for being resentful for, toward them is the money. No, it's not. The reason you're resentful is, like, because they're happy, and you don't like that they're happy and staying at home and living comfortably and working comfortably while you're earning more money than them, and that's the excuse that you're using. So you're a huge asshole here. Total asshole. Danny? Oh, man. It's crazy. This is the kind of, like, life I would always want of, like, wishing my partner could make it and do their dream, right? I'm the kind of person who really enjoys in other people's like happiness and it's just so antithetical to my like beliefs of like uh, rooting for each other as like partners so like it is coded in a way that feels like this person is not a jerk they're trying their best they're just paying bills but you crack open the surface and you find wait a minute no this is not that and this this she's an asshole that's what I have to say. Yeah, uh, I would say I, I agree with both of you, but I um I don't know. I uh I do think to some degree she is like subsidizing this guy's happiness, but you know, I think that's being in a relationship, right? You're trying to make the other person happy as often as possible. Yeah. Me when it happens. Yeah, I, you I know? Mean, <laughs> well, yeah, like God, every single time I'm like, well, maybe I do get it. I remember he offered jobs, he offered payment, yeah. he offered this, yeah. he offered compromise, and she's just like, no. Then what is your alternative? What is uh, your what would be quit. perfect for you? Yeah, but he should that he quit. Would quit. But but what does quitting mean? He goes back to yeah, his old that's job. That's what she wants. That's all she no, wants. Well, she says she says quitting would kill his career. So it's like, oh well, he wouldn't be making any money for at least a little that's bit. That's what I was thinking. It's just ridiculous. All right, that's a three zero. I I really wasn't expecting it on that one. Let's go. We're just too goaded. She actually says in the comments, she's like, we're only able to put a little together for savings each month, and it's like. You all have like savings too. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. It's like um, if you guys remember like two months ago, that yeah. thing that was like 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And then they dug a little deeper and it was like a bunch of people were like, yeah, we're living paycheck to paycheck. You know, like every new paycheck, we can only put like five to 10,000 in our savings account. And it's like, well, hold up. That's <laughs> that's not. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check out our budget. And there's like a huge line item for savings. And it's like, well, then you're. All right, whatever. The council has spoken. This next one and our last one is it's been deleted. So that's how you know it's a good one. This is not on our Am I the Asshole. It's not on relationship advice. It is on r slash sex. Oh, yes. Finally. Uh, now, God. you may not be familiar with this uh, subreddit, and that's because it gets maybe one post a year. Requires redditors to have sex, so it's it's a little uh, disused, <laughs> a little dry. <laughs> yeah, you would you could say, but uh, this is a good post on it. Here we go. I f twenty six found my boyfriend's m thirty one porn stash. Okay, here we go. Okay, what does a porn stash look? You're gonna like find these out. Days? I'm sorry. Like I was exploring in the woods when I found a tree with a large hole in it where he had a bunch of Playboy pinups. All right, here we go. Throw away just in case. Me and my partner have been together for almost two years. I'm at home today while my partner's at work, and he gave me permission to go on his computer to access his League of Legends account. He's a lower Stop. rank than me, so I can just chill out at his level. Wow, this one okay. is starting with, I asked my boyfriend to get on his computer so I could smurf. That's That's awesome. I hope both these people oh, fall League off of a Legends cliff. Players. <laughs> League of Legends players. League, oh, League players. God. And I know, oh, I was one. All right. I went to files, oh. and the first thing I see is a folder hidden under several other folders, as you'd expect. Wait, do women know about this trick? Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Um, please don't go <laughs> snooping around my documents, my documents, my documents, three, my documents, school stuff. All right, here we go. <laughs> I click on it and I find a lot. I mean, a lot of porn. It's been a bit of a point of contention in our relationship recently because sometimes I'll feel a bit unloved or undesirable when he chooses to masturbate instead of involving me to the point where it'll be first thing in the morning. He'll go downstairs to masturbate instead of initiating sex when I'm upstairs in bed with no plans. League of Legends player has no plans at nine in the morning. That doesn't what? make sense. No uh, way. I've got a lot of insecurities and I feel like he doesn't initiate much, which I've spoken to him about. That hasn't really changed. Anyway, my real issue is I found hundreds of pictures from girls 
from Instagram and Facebook. In one instance, it was clear he had screenshotted holiday photos and saved them to his folders with the girl's name. These girls are not sex oh. workers. I don't know them, but I find it really uncomfortable that he's masturbating over holiday photos of unsuspecting girls he knows. There's lots and lots of folders with porn stars' names, which I don't really care about. I don't have a problem with masturbating. I do it rarely. And watching porn to facilitate this. What I do have a problem with is him following girls on Instagram masturbating to them, especially when I have a high sex drive and will every day try to initiate, which he will sometimes reject while he does not. Just to add, he does have a folder with my name, with all the nudes that I've sent of him. I guess that's a positive. My question is, is this normal? Am I justified in having a problem with this? Or do I just need to suck it up as my partner being porn brained and move on? Do I tell him what I've seen or do I leave it to eat away at me and my self-confidence? I'd really love some advice, please. TLDR, my boyfriend masturbates. All right. What are we thinking on this? Oh, okay. Uh, I think he should Danny goon didn't start more. One yet. Uh, he's not gooning enough. <laughs> oh, no. If he if he this spent half as much nasty, time practicing bro. League of Legends yeah. as he practiced <laughs> gooning, bro, get off the gooner and get to Challenger, man! Holy shit! <laughs> practice your yeah. clicking. Practice, practice your last hit and not your last hit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You are so fucking Practice annoying. your fucking kill that. streak, that. not your that. edge streak. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, oh, man. You know, I was like so weirded out at the start of this because I was sitting like, what the fuck is a porn stash, right? Like a porn stash, what fucking www.pornhub.com? Like fucking nobody has a porn stash anymore, like, well, you know? But this guy and does. I'm, Maybe you fools who believe that cloud-based pornographic storage solutions will save you every single time. But when the internet goes down, there's going to be one guy with a real big hard drive coming to get your yeah, drive yeah, hard. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, <laughs> physical media is important. Blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, you know, okay. But, but like, okay. I buy my porn on Laserdisc. <laughs> yeah, Laserdisc. Couple, yeah, my couple, porn is on a floppy disk. Watching pornography in a relationship isn't cheating. I don't think that, like, that's kind of fucking weird to think that. And also, like, I, I don't know, whatever. But, like, I don't know. Jerking off isn't, like, a big deal. Honestly, dudes just jerk off in the morning. Just, like, we take a shit in the morning, right? It's something we do. The thing that fucking sucks here is screenshots of other women's profile pictures and yeah. stuff like not porn stars just women he knows screenshotting their instagram and facebook pictures and jerking it off to them that is fucking unforgivable i think she should be way more mad about that actually i think you've kind of hit the nail on the head here I, I we've written the guy today a ton of checks in every story and i'm you know i still got the book out you know, I, I do think it's okay for him to have like a bunch of pornography images saved on his computer. You know, I, I remember doing that before, you know, some of us predate tube sites uh, in terms of um, how old we are. Uh, and I do feel for her. Um, while I do think it's okay that he jerks off while he's kind of bad at keeping up with her sex drive. You know, it, it is something that, like uh, Jordan said, is like this low maintenance thing. And it can feel bad to know that this person is not willing to initiate sex, but is willing to jerk off. But uh, it really isn't like a now I'm horny. Let's do something about it. Sometimes it is just more reflexive. But the line he crosses is taking photos off Facebook. That's insane. That's yeah, like that's serial killer shit. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Jesus Christ. Well, I think yeah. not to gloss over that portion. I do think it fucking sucks. That she keeps trying and he just like doesn't want to have sex with her or whatever. Yeah. Like doesn't want to do sexual acts with her. Like I don't understand. This is like. Yeah, I, I, I literally can't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. The <laughs> idea is that you probably can just like have sex or have sexual uh, stuff with your partner. And just inherently you will jerk off less because you're having sex, right? Like that's the idea. Yeah. Not that you can't jerk yeah. off once in a while or maybe your partner goes off on a trip or whatever and you're just like oh i'm like i'm born and horny and i'll jerk off this is not that right this is like oh i i i find more pleasure in jerking off and my girlfriend wants to have sex with me but no i would rather look at my porn dump which is like also insane to me right like a bit like yeah it's just i, I get I, jerking off i get jerking off right i don't get it in this regard i don't get it when she's like you got like what your partner with you. Do you like her anymore? Just break up with her if you're just gonna jerk off all the time, right? I will say I understand like wanting to just 
jerk off and get rid of like the biological urge or yep. whatever and you really don't have like the energy or the mental capacity like to go you saw sex. you saw someone eat a mozzarella often, ball or something I can with it. no yeah <laughs> but, uh, but this is different this isn't no i do agree with what you're saying that's what yeah, i'm, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to lead up to that danny is that i do agree with that what you're saying where it's just like okay she clearly is like initiating sex all the time like clearly has a very high sex drive and it's just like get off of me like slapping her away like a stray cat and you're just like i'm gonna go diddle myself instead like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah, bro? Like, like sure you need to jerk off but that is crazy to me what's the point of the relationship then yeah i, I don't know <laughs> if you're not I getting just... laid why even be in the relationship <laughs> but, but this guy's a gooner and has insecurities and they're playing league like you, dude you have a girlfriend that's what most league of legend players can't do you you can have sex. <laughs> you know what it might be? It might be for the aesthetics. And maybe he's like um playing league with his buddies and he's like, sorry guys, I gotta go. And they're like, gotta go what? Have sex with your girlfriend, you fucking freak? Goon the women online like the rest of us. And he's like, fuck, I got a goon. Okay. And he's just like, starts saving everything. Okay, whatever. And then she's like, this is like really hot girl who likes so She's like, oh hey. babe, do you want to have sex? And he's like, no, I gotta, I gotta jerk off and last hit. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. I it's uh, it sucks. Like I just I don't want to come off as the guy that's always like constantly sex brained and sex, sex, sex. Yeah, well, well, too sex. bad, dude. But it's like you know we've bad, been doing bro. this for thirty weeks. Yeah. If they don't get that, that's they true. should. I, I mean, that is just me. I Listeners, guess. Listeners, like, buy the Patreon and you'll get even more sex, sex, sex. <laughs> but like I like I do understand having a different sex drive than your partner is a very real and common thing. Like I understand that, but. Like, you clearly also have a sex drive. What it feels like is that you're just too fucking lazy to have actual sex. Like, yes, when you have actual sex, you have to put in the work to fuck your partner and also make them come. Like, yeah, you have to I mean, do okay, that. Well, you hold should up. do that You don't more. have to. Oh, my God. I got to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> You should. You should. <laughs> and yes, it takes time, but it's a great fun thing to do. It's good to do that. But you're like, no, I'm lazy. I want to not. I literally think it's yes. just laziness. I think Absolutely this guy is correct. just fucking just lazy. Like, oh, I'd rather that's jerk like, off. Literally. It's just easier and I don't want to do all the work. Like, that's uh, just, it's gooner mentality. It is gooner mentality. It is gooner mentality. To want it is gooner to mentality. jerk off instead because it's faster. You can control your hand better or whatever. And it's the whatever. And you get to look at thousands of fucking files of porn. Like, listen, I've jerked off to porn. You guys have jerked off to porn. What the this fuck? This is not you the case. Never. I've never. <laughs> God, I, I want to just like grab this guy's shoulders and just be like, fuck your partner. Eat pussy. Make her come. You fucking loser. Are, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Eat some mozzarella balls. It's just like, um, <laughs> I just like, oh, I can't get over it. Just like, are people so, like, ah, I, I'm back on hating men. I'm sorry. The last one, I sided against the man. Never should have done that <laughs> yeah, shit. I should super stick wrong. to my fucking stick to my guns. And just hate men because it's so easy. Like, uh. I, I, I get it. I, like in a normal scenario, you know, whatever, masturbate and done, it, it, you know, and then maybe you still have sex, whatever, whatever your sex drive is. This is not the case. It's not. Happening. Well, again, I, I think we are focusing on the wrong thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Theoretically, he could, instead of jerking off, go have sex with his partner. Uh, yada, yada, yada. You know, uh, welcome to fucking uh, the 21st century. You know, uh, gooning is an <laughs> art at this point. The thing that I find repulsive about his behavior is the Facebook thing. The fact yeah. that he's taking images so oh, yeah, I can't weird, that. Man. From, from women who are like posting their holiday pictures that he knows. And he's like, I'm going to jerk off. That is freakish shit. That's like a real problem. Uh, that's like, and I think this person's head is in completely the right place when she's like, oh, like he has folders that are like porn stars. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with are like the girls he knows in real life that he is just saving selfies of. That's monstrous. That's that's evil. Yeah, it's it's actually really despicable. I think this guy's a fucking loser and a weirdo. And you should have seen it as a red flag because he plays League. He's not like, even sorry. good at League. You You're better league. at League than him. Yeah. Exactly. Like, not only does he play League, he's bad at League too. So he's bad at the video game. He spends all his fucking time on. You don't know he on. spends all he his time on it. Pictures. Maybe he spends more time gooning than on League. Maybe he's better at gooning than he is League. Oh, you, he, okay. They met over playing hmm. League, and you don't think he spends all his fucking time playing League? Who said they met over league? playing Come League? I'm making this up. This is my okay, headcanon. Right. They met over this playing League. I'm, I'm extra loser this guy, because I need to, because I hate him. <sighs> <sighs> All right, do you want to vote? Yeah. Yes. Decision time. All right, uh, Jordan, do you think this guy's the asshole? Okay, 
I've done a lot of these lately. Maybe I'm using this button too flippantly, but this is a kill button. This is a kill button for me. Danny. Hate this guy. Hate him. He's a freaking Absolutely. weirdo. I'm with Jordan. Button pressed. Uh, it should be a 2-1. I want to side with a woman here, but she is smurfing, which is a uh, death That's penalty. That's true. True. Ah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, you should say, I want to side with the woman, but she plays League of Legends. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're going to have to pick between two League of Legends players. It's not easy. <laughs> uh, that, that is kind of, uh, this is like very strange to me because I wouldn't have expected someone who plays League to be like some sort of perverse sexual creep. I re it, that is like yeah, that's the strange thing. Yeah, very that's weird. weird. I would never, I would Most never. You players know, are very. Odd. I, I YouTube comments are gonna fucking hate <laughs> us for that one. Hey, YouTube commenters, if you play League, I don't respect you. Leave your comments down there. <laughs> like the video, you little baby. Let's say that they are playing their dream game, and you ask them to quit for no reason other than the fact that you are miserable playing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Shut uh, up. I don't know. Shut up. The council has spoken. <laughs> all right anyway anything else we good are we can we leave <laughs> i think we're whoa right, joseph bye -bye. get At those cheese balls out of your mouth <laughs> <laughs>